Hi, it's Chester at Blue Peak and Computer Training, and in this video, we're going to look at how we can get data to sort automatically. So, in this little data set here, if I was to change one of these figures, let's make Chris's sales figure the highest figure in the list. You can see Chris automatically ends up at the top of the list. If I was to add Fiona to the list and put in an even higher figure, she ends up automatically at the top of the list. So we're going to look at how we can do this. This was achieved with a little VBA macro, but I will show you how to do this without a macro as well. Okay, let's hop over to the first example. Now it's worth noting that if you have Excel 365, then there is a much easier method than the method I am about to show you. So I will cover the Excel 365 method later on in this video. When you are using formula, the data will be sorted in a separate table, not in place. If you need to sort your data in place, the only way of really doing that is with a Excel VBA macro, which I will show you how to implement towards the end of the video. Now your first step is to create two extra columns, rank and tie, and you'll see why these are important in a moment. And then you need to house your data in an Excel table. An Excel table creates a dynamic range. So if we add more salespeople to our data set, they will automatically get included over here within our sorted data. Okay, so to house this data set in an Excel table, click in any cell, go up to insert on your ribbon, and then click on table. Or alternatively, you can use the shortcut key, control T. And then all you need to do is just make sure that this tick box here is ticked. My table has headers, click on OK. Next thing to do is give the table a name. So we get an extra tab on our ribbon, table design, table name box over on the left hand side. And we'll call this sales underscore 2019. Can't have a space in the name, so I've used an underscore. Press enter to confirm. Now the first thing to do is work out the rank of these sales figures and to do that we can use a function called rank.eq and the first argument is number so what number do we want to rank well in the first instance it's this number here comma ref is the range of numbers that you want to rank this number against so that's all these cells here comma order is the order in which you want to rank your numbers Descending or ascending. Descending is the default, and that's what we want, so we don't need to use that argument. So it's ranked these numbers, but one thing you'll notice is, is that Charlie and Kathy have the same sales value, so they've both been ranked three, and there's no rank number four. Now that doesn't bode well for our table over here, so I'm afraid Kathy is going to need to be rank number four. So how do we do that? Now we're going to use the tie column to sort out this problem with duplicate rankings. And the function that's useful for this is count if. What we want to do is identify whether our rank number appears more than once. Now the first argument is range and the range needs to grow as it's copied down this column. So initially the range will just be a single cell, but then as it's copied down, it becomes two, then three, then four cells. To do that, we initially need to refer to C2, and I'm going to have to type it in because I'm in a table and I'm going to fix. Then I put a colon in, and then I click into the cell, and it will refer to it with this syntax because we're in a table. Comma, then criteria is this cell here. So we're counting how many times six appears in this range of one cell, which will obviously be one. Now, if I press enter, and so I get all ones until I get down to the second occurrence of rank number three. Now essentially, if this says two here, I need to add one to this rank number. But I need some sort of logical test here. So I'm going to say, is the result of the countif function greater than one? And now I can say I get a true down here. So then I can use an if. And I can say, if this is true, then... I need to take the rank number and add one. Otherwise, I just need to return the rank number. 
I close the bracket there, press enter. And now I have the correct rank numbers with Kathy now getting a rank of four. I now have all the data I need in this table to create a sorted list over in this table. Now you'll notice that I have the rank numbers expressed in the first column of my table. And these are gonna be used to cross-reference the numbers in the tie column in this table. And I'm gonna use the index function. There are two versions of the index function. And in this example, we're using the array version. So array is the range of cells that you want to return values from. Well, in this column, the salesperson column, the only values I want to return are the salesperson's names in column A, comma. So the trick here is to pick the correct row number from within this range. And I can do that by cross-referencing this rank number with the associated rank number in the tie column. Match is great for this. Match returns the position of a value within a range. So I want to look up this value one within this lookup array. Match type is zero, because I'm doing an exact match. Close the bracket for match. Column number is the remaining argument within index, and you can see it's non-mandatory because I only have one column in my index array. I don't need to specify a column number, so I can close the bracket, press enter, and you can see that Paul receives rank position one. If I look in the data here, Paul does have the highest sales figure. Now I'm gonna copy this down by double clicking on the fill handle, and we get some NA errors that we can deal with quite easily. Two ways of doing this, you could use if error or if NA, not all versions of Excel have if and a, so we use if error. And that has two arguments, value, which is the formula that may or may not return an error. And the value of error, we want a blank cell, so we have an empty text string as our value of error. Press enter, double click to fill down and get rid of those NA errors. So we need to do the same thing for the sales figures. So index. Our array is the sales figures in the other table. Our row number is returned by the match function. Again, looking up our rank number here within the tie column. Doing an exact match, close bracket for match, close bracket for index. Use my if error. To return an empty text string if there is an error. Double click to fill down. And I've got my sorted version of my original data. Now let's see what happens if I change one of these values. Let's say Betty actually achieved 9,000 pounds worth of sales. She now ends up at the top of the list. Let's add Boris to the end of the list. Let's say he achieved 10,000. You can see I get an extra row in my data and Boris ends up at the top of the list. So that's how you can sort automatically on numeric data. Now let's look how we can sort automatically on text data. Now the method for this is almost exactly the same apart from can't use the rank function to sort text values. But what we can do is count for each of these names how many other names appear before it alphabetically. Now I can do that using the count if function. And the range of cells will be this range here, the names. And my criteria would be less than ampersand this name here, the name in this row. So if I close the bracket, press enter, you can see that as it's copied down, that Ben is the first name alphabetically, then Betty, then Chris, then David, etc., etc. Now, Ben would actually need to have a rank of one rather than zero. So all we need to do is add one to our formula. And now we have our ranking system. And you can see over here that it's shown our names in alphabetical order. If we wanted to show them in descending order, so Z to A, then all we would need to change is this comparison operator to greater than. 
By the way, with our numbers, you could also reverse this order within the rank function with the order argument. If I wanted to rank the lowest sales value one and the highest sales value 11, then I'd use this last argument and specify sending. You can see now that we have the lowest sales value ranked one. So here, if I add Zena to my list of salespeople, you can see her name automatically appears at the top of the list. If we had two bends, then you'd see the two bends were given different rank numbers, despite the fact that the same name, because again, we're using this tie column to calculate the rank number in the event of a tie. Now let's move on to the solution or method you can use with Excel 365, completely different. There is a sort function we can use. So again, this data is in a table and over here, I'm going to use the sort function and to try and sort by name. The first argument is array. That's the table of values I want to sort, comma, sort index is the column I want to sort on. So if I'm sorting by name, it's the first column, so the sort index is one. Sort order, here I can specify whether I want to sort in ascending or descending order. We'll just say ascending, which is the default. By col, you can either sort by column or by row. Well, we are sorting by column, which is also the default. So in other words, those two last arguments we don't need to use. If I press enter, it spills its results into surrounding cells and we have the sort order that we require. To sort by sales, I could use the same function sort. My array is the range of cells that we want to sort. Sort index would be two. Close the bracket, press enter, and I'm done. So much, much simpler in Excel 365. Let's move on to the final method I want to explore, and that's using a little bit of VBA code. And the advantage of using this method is that you can actually sort your data in place rather than in another table. Now the code that you need in order to do this, I've left in the description of the video and I'm gonna show you where you need to paste that code. So what you need to do is right click on the sheet tab down at the bottom here, go to view code. That opens up the Visual Basic Editor and you'll see that it's selected the particular sheet that you are in within the Project Explorer. If you can't see this Project Explorer, just go to View, Project Explorer. Now what you want to do is paste the code that I've provided into this window here, the code window. Now this will work for the example I'm giving you here, but for your data, there's just a few things you will have to change. One is the name that you've given your table. So my table is called sales 2022. And then also you need to think about the column you want to sort by. So I'm sorting by the sales column, the sales 2022 column within the sales 2022 table. So here is where you specify that. Notice that the column name is within square brackets. The other things you might need to change is the order in which you want to sort your data or sales data in this instance it can either be excel descending or excel ascending so you just need to change that piece of code and then also down here i specify whether or not i have headers so that can be excel yes or excel no i do have headers so that's why i put excel yes now with that code in place, I can just close down the Visual Basic Editor. For example, if Louise's sales figure gets revised to 12,000, it automatically jumps to the top of the list. If I add another salesperson, say Julie, she achieves 11,000, she ends up second in the list. If you're using the VBA method, you do need to save your file as a macro enabled workbook so when you go to file save as this is the file type you need to use excel macro enabled workbook okay that's all i wanted to cover in this particular video hopefully you found that useful if you have please subscribe and i'll see you next video